to things. They need a challenge. Yeah, something that will bring out their inner strength and courage. Ah, oh, yeah. The biker gang from hell. Uh, burst through the windows, which you can see are already smashed if you play it slowly. And, of course, we have uh, the Lord General, Vernon Wells. Yeah, uh, Wes <laughs> himself from Mad Max 2, wearing pretty much the same outfit. He, just before he went, I was going to say before he went commando, but that's not quite right, <laughs> went to perform in commando as Bennett. The campest villain in any film ever. I don't need a gun, John. And Michael Berryman from uh, Hills Have Eyes with his yes. unique... Uh, oh, God. Oh, The Hills of Eyes is very much one of those film boxes which used to give me the fear, but totally drawn towards them. Have you seen it? Yeah, not not a good film. It's really disturbing. I mean, that film does not hold back in terms of what it does to that family. Jesus. Yeah, I I didn't like it. I just thought it was far too slow moving at the start. Wes Craven, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, a couple of years before Nightmare on Elm Street? Well, Hills Have Eyes would have been about 77, 78 maybe. Six or seven years. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street was 84. Michael Berryman was also, just about this time, he played a headmaster or a teacher of some kind in the Motley Crue video for Smoking in the Boys' Room, in which he has the world's worst wig. I can imagine that would look very odd, a wig on him. (laughs) Yeah, he looks very, very bizarre in it. You know, obviously taking the piss out of teachers, which is funny because later on he says how he doesn't want to lose his teaching job. Watching it tonight, and I was thinking, is that possibly the best line in the film? <laughs> just, to, oh. just to keep this between ourselves, I'd hate to lose my teaching job. God bless. The bikers are rampaging through the house. We then what Max and Ian are actually made of here. They're cowards. Yep, yep. Girl schmurls. <laughs> of course, Scary Boy's first instinct is to hide in a cupboard. Yep. Not going to stand up to it. Nope, nope. Bravery is an outdated <laughs> concept. Yeah, so in comes the Lord General with his uh, biker chick from hell. And it, oh, he's got that stripe across his face. He's got that weird shotgun. He does that scream with uh, animal voices imposed on it. Seeds to completely tear them down. The most yeah. embarrassing stuff that they can that he can come out with. And interestingly, there was a, a line that was uh, cut from the TV versions as well. Because uh-huh. when he says, tossed off to any good books recently yeah. that's not in the tv versions that i first saw oh really okay so yeah so when i first saw that like you know <gasps> i never knew he said that oh my god so when when lisa goes to see gary's parents the bit about tossing off was that in it yes that was in it yeah it seems odd that they... i guess it was less mm. fundamental to the the story so yeah he was he insulting them you can't even have a shower with a beautiful woman without wearing your jeans. <laughs> but yeah, they uh, managed to overcome. Yeah, it's just that realisation about enough's enough. Yeah. We're going to just do it. If we're going to die, we're going to kick ass. Yeah. That inevitably means the gun comes out again. They let go of the girls, the bikers head back off. Gary's going, No, we're heroes. Nice. No. Where'd you get that gun? <laughs> Squirting. Shoots it off. It's the thing. It's like so. It's an actual gun at that point. Where was Lisa going with this then? That's what I'd like to know. What was she prepared to do at this point, or let him do? Let's not get too logical about it, you know. I mean, I think in terms of some sort of internal logic here, there needs, there needs to be yeah. something. To... I mean, the joke is that they thought it was a squirt gun, and it's not. It was a real gun. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it was a squirt gun when you thought it was a real gun, now you think uh-huh. it's a real squirt gun. Uh-huh. And I'd love to know what she would have done if they hadn't stepped up. How far was she prepared to go? Were they in any real danger during this? I mean, there's that one guy who gets a mace in the nuts. Yeah, he's the only one that's actually hurt, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's the one who actually suffers there. Then you've got the uh, the great leaving bit from the gang, as we already said. Yeah. Come and keep this between us. Yeah. And then the other guy, I'm terribly sorry. Call me, we'll have lunch. Yeah, make it party. <laughs> you have a lovely house. And then, of course, that's it for the party. 